Welcome back to my channel everyone. Today is going to be a different kind of video because I wasn't expecting to do this, but my mom had this idea, so here we are. I'm gonna be doing a reading vlog for the first time and I'm pretty sure that this reading vlog is going to be only like me being in my room, so it's not gonna be very interactive about other things in my life, but hopefully you guys will be able to see some cats. You get to hear my opinions on books and it's a fun time. That's what I'm hoping at least. So what happened was on September 2nd, I filmed my wrap up that's actually going up today of August before my mom asked me if I wanted to do a book bingo board with her and I asked her if there was a prize if someone won the bingo and now there is and so we are now trying to beat my mom at reading which i quite frankly think she's still gonna beat me because she reads shorter books than i do but i thought this would be fun for you guys to see so she printed it out the bingo board a lot of the squares in here i don't actually read usually but i figured out that this far column I could fill in pretty easily with some books. So I was gonna give you the books that I'm reading for each one, and then throughout this vlog, I will tell you my feelings on each book. So these are the squares that I'm filling in with the books that match that square. So the first is published in 2019, which is The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. So the next one is Purple on the cover, and that would be Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. Then we have Fantasy, which is so broad, but I chose to do The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps by Kai Ashante Wilson. And then has been made into a movie, The Hobbit. And then last but certainly not least, Non-Human Characters, and I chose Book Lane and Corbel Brooch's second collection of short stories. So that's what I'm going to be reading in this vlog and I'm hoping that I get through the majority of them. But let me tell you about the book that I did finish. I finished Steven Erickson's Book Lane and Corbel Brooch, the second collection of short stories. I could only give this three stars because the second story in this collection was just rough. I wish it had been edited more so that it wasn't so slow, but I did read all three of the short stories in this one and for the most part the first and third story I felt were pretty solid ones and I felt like we got enough of Boucle and Corbel Brooch and Mr. Reese, but the second story we just like never heard from them until the last page and I think that's what annoyed me the most besides the fact the perspective we were in just wanted to talk forever. This was three stars. It it wasn't fun to read through, which is unfortunate, but now I can say that I've read these books and know what happened with these necromancers. <laughs> now I'm on the largest book, which is the Jen Lyons one, The Ruin of Kings. And I was really nervous about picking up this book because the reviews on Goodreads are decently below four. Um, it's a 3.8 something on Goodreads. Uh, and even when I check the story graph, it's around the same area too with less reviews. So I'm kind of like, I, I was very nervous to pick it up. However, I've actually got into about 60 pages in this book and I've been really enjoying it. So I don't like, now I'm nervous that like something's gonna happen in the middle of the book that like throws it all off, which I'm really hoping doesn't happen. But what I do know is we've got two characters trying to tell the same story, but beginning at different parts. And so we've got a woman named Talon who's got some interesting uh, powers that you immediately read about on the first page. And she is watching over someone in jail and I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Kieran. He's telling one version of his story which starts with him being bought as a slave. And then she starts his story when he is stealing stuff for money in the city that he was raised in. So we're starting at two different points in his life and it's really interesting. Also, the thing about this book that I didn't know was that we have, we're having the story being told kind of, it's third hand because a servant of their majesty, Servishar Dolores, that's how I'm gonna pronounce his name, he is the start of this book and he writes a small note to his majesty that this is what he found on what has happened 
and it's not what they think actually happened. But he makes little footnotes in the book. I didn't realize that there was going to be footnotes and I've been really, really loving it. There's some personality from this character as well as just general knowledge of the world that I really, really like that's coming through. So, but I do think it's slowing me down on reading, but overall I'm really enjoying this book right now. And I will see you in the next clip for whatever it is. Hi, this is an update because I realize I need to update you guys as a reading vlog goes on. Things we learn when we do new things. It's nighttime, obviously, and I have gotten a little bit over halfway in the book. And so far at the beginning of this book, I was super interested in what was going on. And now there's a little bit of a lull, I think around like page 150 to like 240 area that I just felt like I wanted more characters, I wanted more POVs to be happening because even though the story is interesting, it's still following the male character in a fantasy world and like that can get boring a lot of the time. And there's still a lot of lore being dropped to a point where now <laughs> Sometimes I just, I'm like, I, I take it in and I'm like, okay, I don't think I'll remember that, but hopefully they'll repeat it sometime down the line. But what I realize is that in the back of this book, there's a huge glossary section, just a section on how to pronounce all of the names in this world, which is what I've been asking for for years now. Ever since Steven Erickson's works and him not having pronunciations, this should just be like a normal thing in all books that deal in the fictional worlds because not everyone knows how to pronounce everything and no one wants to say something wrong because to them that's how they read it and they didn't hear any different. Unless you read audiobooks, but even sometimes audiobook narrators get it wrong. Anyways, overall, I would say right now I definitely want to read, I usually know by halfway through a book if I will continue on in the series. And at this point, I do want to continue on into the second book. I think there's enough strands of mystery that I do want answers for. And I find myself wanting to care still about this main character that we're really following. I do hope in the later books that we get more people and more interactions with them rather than this one character because I'm starting to get a little bored by him. I guess I don't really have any more updates than that. It's not like I the writing's really easy. The world isn't so difficult and ha but like in the last I want to say 50 pages I'm at 300 now. There has definitely been some bigger lore drops of how the world was built that I'm like ooh okay now you're getting my interest again tomorrow my goal is to finish this book so let's hope <laughs> it's another 200 plus pages to read in a day i usually don't push myself this hard to read every day but when we're trying to beat my mother at bingo i'm i'm gonna try right now it's kind of sitting at a 3.5 for me. I thought it was going to be at 4 by now. We'll see what kind of twists and turns this book is going to throw in the next hundreds of pages. So that's it for, for this check-in. I'll see you guys in the next one. This is a check-in to let you guys know that I have now made it to less than 100 pages of finishing the book and it has gone back up since the last time I uh, updated you guys. It definitely is now up to like a four star again, but a lot more drama has happened in the book, a lot more intrigue, so it's definitely gonna be a four star, I think. But I do have a little bit of qualms with the character building that I think I will update you guys on once I finish the book. This is the first time my camera's ever not been... Yes, I will let you guys know in the next update. <laughs> I'll let you guys know in the next update how the book was and when I finished it. And here's, here's Reggie. There you go. You wanna say hi? Here's another update. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Oh, hello, my sweet boy. It's really hard to carry your cat with one arm and try to give him all the scratches. Yes. This is Reggie, by the way. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put it down now. So I have finished The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons and overall I gave it 4.5 stars. So really this book 
turned itself around very well for me. What happened was a lot of things started to conclude very nicely and I think the fast pace that happened really right at the end, I would say like 420 pages, the speeding up of it really really helped. There is a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of storyline plots that I think Lions did a really great job of concluding for the most immediate ones that were happening in the book. However, the reason why I can't give this book five stars is because one, I found the main character, Kieran, that's how I pronounce it, and there's a glossary and his name isn't in the back. So he isn't my favorite character to follow. Even though a lot of things happen to him that make his life exciting, he wasn't a person that I gravitated towards. I actually gravitated towards all the other characters and I kind of felt this book should have been placed later, meaning it should have been published later and the prequel should have happened or a different set of stories because there are so many other people. I want to know their stories more than I want to know this kid's story. That's me and I don't know if that's shared by anybody else who's read this book. I did read reviews now to see why other people gave it lower stars. A lot of people didn't like the narrative story of this book. A lot of people wished it was streamlined instead of told in different timelines. The timeline was really easy for me to follow is more so how many names you had to remember that were important. I think the thing about this book too is for me, it feels more important to connect to the plot rather than the character. And I'm okay with that. If you have a really strong preference to it being character driven for you, I wouldn't recommend this book at all. This would probably be a very, very boring read for you and you might even DNF it. I also read in the comments that the audiobook is not great for listeners and that when people switched from the audiobook to the physical book, it was way easier to understand what was going on. I think for me, this was a really great read, but I can see why a lot of people have issues with reading this book. But yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed it and I'm super excited to read the second book. So I'm glad I picked it up. So now we're moving on to the next prompt in the bingo chart. Because remember we have a bingo thing going on. This one is, it's been made into a movie. So just a reminder, that's going to be The Hobbit for me. And yes, I've never read this book before. Um, I'm a little bit worried <laughs> because it's so slow paced book. I knew that. But the other thing is, I know what happens. <laughs> I know what happens in this book and I'm not gonna be surprised by anything. Okay, look, here's something cool to show you guys. So this is technically under 300 pages. I am gonna start reading this tonight. Hopefully get in at least to chapter one. I don't even know how long chapter one is. So maybe I shouldn't even say that. Okay, page 26. So if I can read 26 pages. So now, Hopefully I'll get in at least a chapter, but then tomorrow it's another day of like really hardcore reading the book. So let's hope that this read goes well. See you tomorrow. Happy Labor Day to those in the United States. Today is Monday and I read 100 pages last night in The Hobbit and my feelings on the book so far are that there's way too many exclamation marks that don't make any sense for the story or dialogue. It's a children's story. It's really simple and the ways in which the whole party, Thorin and co, get out of situations are very simple. And that's all I really have. Nothing is really surprising me. Again, I know the story very, very well. So it's not a surprise, any of the information coming forth. The book was definitely written in a different time and there is a lot of, there's so many details uh, in certain descriptions that I'm like, did we really need to know all of that? I don't think so. There's a lot of flowery, flowery, I can't say it. There's a lot of pretty terms, pretty words that I don't think nowadays children books would have in them. Yeah, there's there's some really good like things that I can pick out that I really, really love, but overall this book is giving me like a 3.5. I don't, I don't have any nostalgia for the book series. I didn't read this when I was younger. I wasn't read to it from when I was younger. So it's, it's average. And also like the representation in this book is uh, uh, tremendously poor to say the least. 
So that's my overall thoughts right now. And I will get back to you when I finish the book probably. So I finally finished reading The Hobbit today and it's a really fun lighthearted read but I find myself wondering if I would have liked it more when I was younger meaning like when I read Narnia which was when I was seven and eight because those is really easy to get through. It's very simple and it's very pleasant and there's a joyful ending and it sets it up really well I believe for Lord of the Rings but it's just very wholesome and I'm not used to that with reading adult fantasy. So that's my feelings on The Hobbit. Next, we are jumping into some nonfiction with hood feminism. This book is getting the square for purple on the cover and it is said notes from the women that a movement forgot. Basically, I think this is a book that I'm going to very much enjoy and learn from and I think it's going to have a lot of similarities with Thick and other essays by Tressie McMillan Cottom. But I think also we're going to get more focus on here through Hood feminism specifically. So it's definitely an area that I don't know much about and I'm looking forward to learning it. Hopefully a, a better read than The Hobbit, not gonna lie. <laughs> I feel like The Little Hobbit wiped me out and I'm hoping this reinvigorates my reading. So I will let you in on an update once I'm about halfway through this book, which will hopefully be later tonight. Hi. Good morning. It's 10.30? It's 10.30 on Tuesday a.m. It's a gray day. It's raining, but the windows are open because it's finally below 70 here in Chicago. So my parents have decided that the windows are open. So I apologize if you hear any of the normal sounds when rain happens in a city. So an update to Hood Feminism. I read almost half last night. I think I'm like three pages away from the actual half point. This is a very conversational book. There isn't a lot of points where I get really confused by vocabulary usage, which is great. And I really enjoy the amount of numbers and facts that are in here. I mean, Kendall did an amazing job with research. The thing that I find that really pulls this book along is Kendall's use of using her own stories in order to give better context to what she's arguing in each chapter as to why hood feminism is the more inclusive way of feminism. I am definitely nodding along to a lot of the things she says. I am feeling this is a good four star book so far. The other thing I want to mention before I finish this book, because that's the goal for today is finishing this book, is that there is a lot of trigger warnings in here I would say. If you can, I think all of them are pretty obvious from looking at the name of each chapter so you kind of know what's going on. But what I will say is like gun violence also includes domestic violence so know that rape culture is also in here and racism obviously is the entire theme throughout this book we've got missing and murdered pretty for a which is pretty for a black girl deals a lot with colorism and racism just read that one uh eating disorders are talked about in here there's a whole chapter about eating disorders for black women and the black community in general so look it up just in case you need to know, but I would say pretty much all of them are referenced in this book. So if you haven't already, you should read this book. I don't know if you can tell, but I am super exhausted right now. I didn't give you guys an update last night that I finished Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. Here, here's my update now at the end of today instead of earlier. Hood Feminism, I am going to give between a four star and a 4.5 star rating. I think this book is really good for any beginner who really wants to understand not just what intersectional feminism looks like, but what feminism should have been looking like from the start and not white centered by white feminists. So. I would definitely pick this up if you are interested in any of that information along with more direct information and facts. There were so many important facts in here that Kendall also added and there's a huge bibliography at the end that gives you all the information of where she got it. Um, hi bud. 
So overall, it's a really great read. The reason why I'm not giving this five stars is because um, I think some of the chapters went a little bit too long and they kind of got, I feel like the main argument of the chapter got a little bit lost sometimes. That was my only thing. But I think it's a wonderful book. I've been gone most of the day, so I actually haven't been reading most of the day. When I got back, I started reading The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps by Kai Ashante Wilson, and it's a bit confusing, I'm not gonna lie, and I think part of it's I'm tired, so I'm not giving it a fair shot. I'm 60 pages in. There's a sorcerer in a group of, what would we call them? A group of warriors um, with a captain, and they're heading either to or through the wild deeps. I started reading the second chapter and I got kind of lost. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, um, I sort of do, it, it, it's weird. There, there was a death at the beginning of the second chapter and then at some point it flipped to going back to where they had originally been. And the only way you know something changes is with this line that's printed in the book, but it doesn't say anything else. It doesn't say whether you've gone back or forward in time. Um, so that's a little bit uh, aggravating. But again, I'm at page 60 and that didn't take very long to read because this book is very small. That's all I really have to update you guys with now. And my mom asked me about it today, how close I was. And I was like, I didn't want to tell you. And she's like, oh, you only have one more left, don't you? And I was like, yes. My mom was like, you're gonna win, aren't you? And I was like, yes. Because my mom's been reading more so like what she would always read and then just filling in the bingo board of those that fit. But I have deliberately read books to get bingo. So that's where we're at. I'm hoping that tomorrow I will finish this book and then the bingo board is over and I can breathe again. <laughs> that's it. I hope I can stay awake longer than, than I feel like I can right now. Well, it's still the same night and day that I read this book. I read it in like, it seems like four hours. Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps, I gave four stars too. So here's my thing with this book though. The back of what it explains happens in this book is like the last 50 pages. And the rest of the book talks about this group in a place called the station. The other thing is, Wilson's writing is like mind boggling almost. Yeah, his his writing is, is like poetry. That's the kind of prose he writes in. However, it does get confusing. Like I said earlier, even though I was extremely tired when I started this book, there is the use of italics of either a conversation happening in the background or in the past that our main character is remembering while moving forward in time. We also have going back in time periods, like I said, with where it gets blocked like this, but you don't know what's happening in the block and why it sometimes matters. The way the timelines work, it helps the story and sometimes it hinders the story. And I feel like when you first get introduced into this book, it's so overwhelming how Wilson writes that you get lost in the words instead of trying to focus on what you're trying to memorize as fact for the story. I got used to it after a bit when I jumped back into it again. So like by page 60, I kind of understood the rhythm. And the other thing to note is that the group that is part of this caravan that um, our main character is a part of do also have their own ways of talking and speaking. And I saw a lot of reviews on Goodreads specifically of people really hating this back and forth dialogue. You would get these beautiful narrations and then all of a sudden you would get thrown into dialogue that's very modern day. Um, sometimes it was in French, sometimes it was in Spanish but it was all over the board. And for me, I didn't hate that actually. I quite enjoyed it. It made characters stand out and it made people more memorable or characters more memorable. But I do see how that can be really annoying. I understand that opinion, but again, I felt like the characters were elevated by their dialogue and the story was not hindered by them. So, the main plot of the story kind of is interesting. It felt like we got a glimpse 
into the lifestyle of these guardsmen for the caravan but we really didn't get an overall understanding of the world and I know it's a very short book novella but I feel like I definitely want more about this world I'm very intrigued to know the bigger dynamics this world has had there was a war that was referenced. One of the characters, spoiler, is a prince <laughs> that is like I think hiding or a king. Pretty sure it's a prince. But otherwise, like I did really enjoy it. It just felt like it felt like just an hour long episode or something. And I was like, but but where's the rest of the season? <laughs> Though it was fun to read a book in one day again for the first time in I don't know how many years. It also makes me kind of sad. There is a second book out and the reason why I picked up this book is because I heard the other one in this, well currently it's technically a duology I guess, but the next book in this series uh, very much focuses more on the romance in this book and it's a black male on male romance so if you're interested in that. Also I believe our main character is actually bi so that's cool too if you want some representation there. So if any of that resonates with you and makes you more intrigued I highly recommend this book. I I have now completed my bingo which means I get a book for my mother. I think if my mom actually planned it she would have beaten me already so but I will do a wrap up tomorrow so I'll see you there with all of my final musings on the books and I hope you got to see some of my cats because they did read with me a lot. I might plug in some photos of them hanging out with me right here if you want to see them. Hey everyone, welcome to the end of this video. It's going to be a wrap up of this week's reading. But today when I'm finishing this, it is Thursday morning and I have completed my one row on this bingo chart that my mom found. Here's the wrap up in order. So I started with Steven Erickson's second collection of Book Lane and Corporal Brooch. I gave this one three stars. There was a really rough story in the middle of this that was so difficult to get through. I think I would have liked the last story more if I had just skipped the middle story. So overall, this is why it's a three star. And that book marked off the non-human characters down here. So the next book I read to mark off published in 2019 was Jen Lyon's The Ruin of Kings book. This one I gave 4.5 stars to. This was really fun. However, I had a lot of issues with the main character, meaning I really didn't attach to them, but I attached to this plot and I attached to the world. So I'm very excited to see where the second book goes and I will be picking up that very, very soon. So the next square I had to check off was a book that got turned into a movie, and that was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, which, by the way, I am wearing an actual Tolkien shirt. This is his signature. That was not planned. The Hobbit for me was 3.5 stars. It was fun, it was joyful, but there's the issue of all the characters are male. Majority of the dwarves don't even have personality traits. One personality trait was just being fat, which I am just one of those people and I know, I know a lot of people are gonna hate this. I am part of that group of people who really enjoy the movies. So the movies are based off a children's book and they're never going to be as serious as the Lord of the Rings ones. But for the most part, when I thought back to the movie while reading this, the beat points are pretty much the same. They just added a more heavier element for the evil in the world. And so if you started watching The Hobbit first and then went to The Lord of the Rings, you would know who the necromancer is and Azog the Defiler and why they had such bigger influence for the next three series. Therefore, all six movies told an overarching plot line. That was kind of the point. And I think some people just really didn't want that, which is fine, but I personally, preferred the movies over the book. The next square I had to fill out was purple on the cover. This one, I'm very happy that this was part of uh, the selected books I wanted to read this month, which was Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. So Hood Feminism focuses on what feminism should have been about and what feminism has become instead of helping everyone be equal. It has only made white women be equal to white men. And she deconstructs basically every part of life and how it should be interpreted now in a way that actually is intersectional and includes everyone in feminism, not just white women. So hood feminism is a great jumping off point for people who wanna learn more about anti-racism work, but specifically it's really just the starting point. I don't feel like this is a book that's gonna get more in depth. There are a lot of facts in here, 
Kendall brings up a great amount of information plus has a bibliography in the back so if you want to go and search out that information yourself and read more in-depthly you can. She does talk about the LGBTQIA plus community. She talks about the Latin X community. She talks about disabilities. She talks about elders. Everything is in here and it's very, very well done. I just feel like there's a couple of chapters she could have edited a bit more to make it more cohesive. That's it, but seriously, very good book, highly recommend. Okay, so the last book that I read that now gets me to the full bingo, which is fantasy, this is the last square, was Kaya Shante Wilson's The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps. This book I read in less than a day and it took me by the reins. I didn't realize I was gonna love it so much and then I did. <laughs> I gave this book overall four stars. It might go up at the end of the month, depending I, if I have a little bit more reflection. Overall, this was just a joy to read. My thing with this book though, and I, you know, the last clip you guys just saw of me probably is the most recent, so it'll be in your memory, but the writing. Look into Wilson's writing. If you can get a preview of this book, look at it and see if you'll enjoy it because if you don't, I don't think you're gonna enjoy this book. I think the people that do enjoy the writing and don't mind the pacing of the book will really enjoy this book. And then for others, it's just gonna completely throw you off and make you really, really not like the book. Once again, it's got a sorcerer, it's got a captain, love story between two men. And it was really, really good, really, really fast. And I'm hoping to pick up the second one soon, but I do have a large TBR pile. So we'll see when I pick up the next one. And that is how I won bingo against my mom. And honestly, my overall take on this week of reading this fast is not positive. There's a bus outside. The boys are officially in here now. <laughs> and now we wait. Hey, you want to come over here? Yeah. Oh, good job. Good job. Um, okay. Well, this changes things a little bit. Yeah. I think they can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Are you gonna go join him? It's been a bit of time since I filmed that uh, last book review and got to hear. There's been a lot. I am sorry if my tone is a bit different because I'm getting more and more frustrated. And uh, in the background, you will hear my cat cleaning himself because he just takes forever. What I was going to talk about was how I felt about this week of reading and doing this bingo. I think if I ever do a readathon, like an official one run by another booktuber, I will do a month one only because doing a week and I can't imagine a 24 hour readathon is very exhausting and it really tires me out. And I don't like that very much. I like having leeway to do other things throughout the day and not have to focus on finishing books so quickly so that I hit a quota so that I can just be done. <laughs> I don't like that feeling at all. It's very stressful. And I don't normally read five books in a week slash like 10 day time frame ever. So I am not gonna do that again. I, if I ever do a readathon, it will be a month and I will take it however which way I wanna take it. So to all of you who read like 20 books a month, go you, awesome. To those of us who read on an average one to three books a month, that's where I'm at. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I don't know how long it's going to be, but I hope you do enjoy it. You got to see a little bit of my cats, which I think is fun. As always, link down below. I have petitions, donations, and links to information about things currently going on in the world and the Black Lives Matter movement. I also have my personal links for social media if you'd like to follow me anywhere else. And I will see you in my next video, and hopefully not as tired. <laughs> Bye. This is the culprit. Also behind him is his brother. He likes sleeping under the blankets. Don't, I don't know why either. We don't know. And he doesn't care that he annoyed me. <laughs>